Hi, welcome to Storytime Online. I'm Miss T, and today I'm going to read you a story. Today's story was picked out especially just for you, so I hope you like it. Are you ready? Let's go. Frosty the Snowman, adapted by Mary Men Kong, illustrated by Fabio Laguna and Andrea Cagoil. The first snow of the year came on the day before Christmas. It was magical. The children at the school couldn't wait to go outside to play, but first they had to watch a magician named Professor Hinkle perform. Messy, messy, messy! The professor grumbled as his magic tricks failed again and again. He threw his magic hat in the garbage, but his rabbit Hocus Pocus took it out and hopped off with it. The bell rang, and the school day was over. The children ran outside. A little girl named Karen helped her friends make a snowman. The children gave the snowman a corncob pipe, a button nose, and two eyes made of coal. Now all the snowman needed was a name. How about Frosty? Karen suggested. It was the perfect name. The children laughed and danced and sang all around their new friend, Frosty the Snowman. Meanwhile, Professor Hinkle was chasing Hocus Pocus, who still had his magic hat. The professor reached for his hat. But suddenly, a gust of wind blew the hat on top of Frosty's head. "Happy birthday," Frosty said, opening his eyes and smiling. The children were delighted. Their snowman had come to life. "It must be the hat," Karen said. "It must be magic." Professor Hinkle was amazed. Now he really wanted his hat back. But it made Frosty come to life," Karen said, as the professor snatched the hat off of Frosty's head. He told the children they were imagining things. Luckily, Hocus Pocus was able to switch the hat with a wreath. The little rabbit quickly hopped to the children. "The hat is back!" exclaimed Karen. "Let's see if Frosty will come to life again." She placed the hat on Frosty's head. Happy birthday," Frosty said again. Soon it got warmer outside. Frosty started to melt. Karen knew that they had to get Frosty somewhere cold. The children all agreed that Frosty should take the next train to the North Pole. Frosty was very happy. "Let's have a parade," he said. At the ticket office. They realized they didn't have enough money for the train ride. Hocus Pocus got an idea. There was a refrigerated boxcar carrying ice cream and cakes to the North Pole. Frosty could ride in there. He got on board. Karen and Hocus Pocus decided to travel with him. Professor Hinkle saw the three friends and hid underneath the train. He wanted that hat back. The boxcar was perfect for Frosty. But it was much too cold for Karen. Frosty knew he had to get Karen warm as quickly as possible, so they got off at the next stop. Professor Hinkle didn't see them leave the train. We've got to get Karen warmed up or she'll freeze, Frosty said to Hocus Pocus. They came upon a small clearing where the forest animals were getting ready for Santa. Hocus told the animals about Karen. And the animals made a fire for her. Suddenly, Professor Hinkle appeared. "Give me back my hat!" he exclaimed. "Get on my shoulders!" Frosty said to Karen. Frosty was the fastest belly whopper in the world. Karen hopped on, and then quickly slid down the hill past Professor Hinkle. At the bottom of the hill, Frosty took Karen into a greenhouse full of Christmas flowers to keep warm. But the mean professor had other plans. He slammed the door shut, trapping Frosty and Karen inside. 
The minute you're melted, the hat will be mine, Professor Hinkle yelled. At that very moment, Santa was in the woods talking to Hocus Pocus. The little rabbit told Santa that Karen needed to go home and Frosty needed to go to the North Pole. He quickly led Santa down to the greenhouse. But it was too late. When they opened the door, they saw a terrible sight. Karen was crying next to a large puddle. Frosty had melted. Christmas snow can never disappear completely, Santa told Karen gently. He opened the door and a gust of magical winter wind blew in and turned the puddle back into Frosty. Professor Hinkle tried to take the magic hat back, but Santa told him that if he did, he would never get any more Christmas presents. Professor Hinkle didn't want that, so he gave Santa the hat. Santa placed the magical hat on Frosty. Happy birthday, Frosty said once again. Karen was so happy that Frosty was alive. Santa let Frosty and Karen ride on his sleigh. He was going to take Karen home. Frosty would go back with Santa to the North Pole where it was always cold. Karen was sad to say goodbye to Frosty, but he promised to come back. Every Christmas, Frosty visited the children, and they had a big parade to celebrate. Happy Holidays! The End All right! I hope you liked today's story. If you did, have Mom or Dad hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. That way, you'll always be notified when we have a new story ready just for you. Also, you can join our Facebook page by clicking the link below. We look forward to seeing you again real soon. Be good. Bye-bye.